<laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome to the first Applied Energistics 2 main tutorial on the channel. So, we're going to get this thing started. I'm going to be assuming that you already have some kind of power coming in. So I'm going to be using a creative energy cell. And we're going to jump right into this. This is episode 1. So we're going to be starting with the basics. I'm going to be showing y'all how to use the inscribers. Now, these inscribers are very simple. All I have to do is I've got these presses that I got from the meteor and there's each a resource for each of them. So diamond is engineering. I can put that in there and you'll see it'll start to make some circuits. Gold is logic. Certus quartz is calculation. And of course, silicone just is going to make you some printed silicone. We're going to need a lot of that. Now, of course, once you've got yourself all of those, I made three stacks of silicone and a stack of each of those. You're going to want to get yourself some redstone as well. And just a stack of each of those with some redstone goes into the inscriber just like that. And that'll start to get me some processors. You're going to get engineering, you're going to get logic, and you're going to get calculation processors. Now, in order to start your first ME network, you're going to need a few things. I'm going to get myself an ME terminal, which has used some basic recipes that you should already have everything for. You're going to need to get yourself some illuminated panels. And then we're also going to need to get ourselves an ME controller. You can also use the energy acceptor that I showed off in one of my shorts. But the controller is relatively easy once you've got some inscribers going. And you're also going to want to get yourself some of these glass cables and some form of ME item storage cell. I'm going to be using 4K just to show the basics, but they're relatively cheap, especially if you have some sort of automation going for your Certus courts. But obviously early on, you probably won't. So you'll want to go with the lower tier, 4 to 16 is usually what I would recommend. And lastly, you're going to want yourself an ME drive, which is what's going to hold all of your storage. That's made like that, relatively easy. We're going to place down the ME controller, and in fact, I'm going to use this energy cell again. We're going to place down an ME controller. That's going to get all of our power. You'll tell that it's getting power by the fact that it starts glowing. I can place down an ME cable and throw a terminal right there, but of course I can't put anything in there because we don't have any storage. That's where this ME drive comes into play. I can place down this ME drive and I can go ahead and place myself some 4K item cells in there. And now I can place as much as I want in there up to however much this will allow me to have 256 types almost and then about 16,000 bytes and one item is one byte. So a pretty good bit of storage there. Of course, you'll want to continue to upgrade throughout time. Another very useful feature for your storage system is the ME storage bus. This will allow you to read the storage from a chest. So you'll see that I've got some birch fences and oak logs in this chest, but it's not connected yet. I'm going to slap this ME storage bus right there and you can change the priority to it. You'll see that the higher priority is gets inserted first and lower priority gets extracted from first. I'm not going to worry about that right now. We don't need that. That's more for automation and stuff. But right now, all we wanted to know is that I can see that I've got oak logs and birch fences in my storage. And you'll see whenever I pull them out, that they get pulled out of that chest. And whenever I put them in, they get put right back into that chest. This is an ME import bus. This will allow you to pull items out of a chest and into your system. So say I take some oak logs and I put them into this chest. The ME import bus will start to pull them into the system. And you'll see that that number will start going down and that number will start going up. It's pulling them into our storage bus connected to the system. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, we've got the ME export bus. I can have this set to export many items at a time. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my wood and fences here and I'm going to filter it. I'm going to say pull up fences, pull out oak logs, and you can change the scheduling mode. It can say either export the first item until the network gets empty. So it'll just export fences until it runs out of fences over here or I can set it to round robin, which means that it will go one, two, one, two, one, two. 
doing oak logs, birch fences, oak logs, birch fences. So as you can see, that's what it's doing right now. And that's usually what I'm going to use for an export bus. But occasionally you may use the until system runs out option. Now, one important thing to learn is that there are many different types of ME cables that you can use. The base is this ME Fluix glass cable. This can carry eight channels and it's not going to show you anything. It doesn't really look that great. You can actually dye it. If I can get to it, you can actually dye it and change the color. You'll use that maybe for some sub networking, which we'll get into later. But for the most part, I'm going to be using smart cables. There are the options to use these covered cables, which you can use to make it look pretty, but they don't really do very much. I'm going to be using these smart cables. And as you'll see, if I add channels to it, so say I put down a couple of drives, I can look right here and this guy will actually light up and tell me I've got four of eight channels. So say I place down four more. Now I have all eight of the channels that I can fit on this ME smart cable. Eight channels is not very much. I can actually upgrade that to using dense cables. And these dense cables can carry 32 channels. That's quite a lot. So I can place down a ton of ME drives or whatever you want to place on here. I can place down, I don't know, I can throw down a terminal, I guess, if I really wanted to. And connect up a cable and throw down a terminal, throw down some more drives, whatever, have some storage buses on there. And this guy is going to show me that I'm carrying 17 of 32 channels there. So these are definitely the preferred method of connecting things in a basic network. I decided to make myself an example of a very basic ME network. I've got a terminal right here. I've got a couple storage buses over here with some chests and then of course some ME drives and it looks like one is two actually were missing channels. That's okay. That's because I have smart cables connected. That's right. Not dense smart cables. So basically the backbone of this network is this ME controller. I've got dense cables being stretched out in three different directions. One of them is being used to run our crafting terminal. And of course, I've still got room for 31 more channels on there. So I can expand that very far out and add as much stuff as I want. I've got another branch coming over here to run my storage buses off of. And all of these are going to the same network. So anything that goes in there, I'll be able to see right over here. Same with any of these ME drives. Anything that's in there, I'll be able to see right over into my crafting terminal, which I don't have anything in there, so there's nothing to see. But that's a very basic ME network setup right there. Of course, you'll expand on that as you play through whatever you're playing. Of course, as you expand, you're going to begin to run out of area. You're going to want to start with some auto crafting, all of these things that you're going to need a bigger network for. So guys, be sure to stick around and wait for the next episode of my ME tutorial because we're going to be diving deep into how to build yourself a large ME network using sub networks, auto crafting, all kinds of fancy and fun stuff that may make no sense right now, but I promise you that by the end of this, all of it will make sense. So guys, be sure to check out the next episode. And as always, Take care, y'all. Thanks for watching.